What's up, divas and divos? Of course, you guys know it is already Wednesday or already Wednesday. I got tongue tied for a second. So you guys know it's time for real talk. So today's real talk is only going to be two of them. I don't really have too much to tell you guys about myself this week except for, oh, okay. So I, I guess I told you guys that I was going to start walking, which I have been walking now for like two weeks. And I've also been going to the weight doctor. Um, They have loads of those places out here, weight doctors. They help you eat right. They tell you what you should eat eat it basically gets you on track you know what i'm saying and they also give you metabol metabolism boosters so i don't take the hydroxy cut currently because i take fedramine i think that's how you pronounce it i always mess it up but it's fedramine and i take it once a day and it boosts your metabolism it's it's it is a prescribed drug, so you cannot buy that over the counter. Plus, I take two other pills that they give me as well that I have to take with food twice a day and when I wake up. So I was um, two weeks ago, 217 pounds. So today I am 211 pounds. Well, yesterday I was 211 pounds. I didn't even get to weigh myself today because, um, first of all, my scale started, um, acting crazy. So I have in a battery operated, a digital operated scale. So I get on every morning. I don't know why, but I just do. Okay. So yesterday morning when I got up, I got on, it was 211. Okay. So I was like, okay. So then when I got on last night and like, like 12 midnight this shit it started blinking it was blinking a little bit more than normal and then it had an e forever so i got off and then i got back on so it, it was blinking a little bit more than normal and then the weight came up it said 197 i was like what i was looking around like okay are we for real right now because um i just woke up and i was 211 now you're trying to tell a bitch she two she 197 all within less than 24 hours i was like um okay well it did say e forever i hope the scale is not trying to fuck with me right now so okay i'm gonna try this again because i knew goddamn well that i was not no 197 and i was standing there talking to myself and the scale and i was like oh okay i like to be 197 that would mean a lot to me but i really don't feel like i'm 197 and my clothes don't fit like i'm 197 so i'm gonna just get on the scale again so when i got on again it said 195 and i was like that's a goddamn lie now you're gonna tell me i lost two pounds within standing here talking to you i said okay so i know definitely that something is wrong with the scale and then when i got up this morning i tried it again it said 192. Now, I'm, I would like to be, but I know damn well I'm not. So anyway, yeah, I will be going out to purchase a new battery because I'm not going to get my high hopes up over some scale that's playing games with me. Like, is it a prank or what? You know what I'm saying? Like, for real, let's just stop. Okay, let's just stop. So, um, I've been weight watching, I weight watching, I've been eating a lot healthier, three meals a day. Oh, I didn't even eat lunch today. Okay. Cause I've been super busy. So I definitely will get something to eat. I normally eat the salads and fruits a lot lately. Um, and what was that? But you know, the fetramine really is an appetite suppressant. It really curves your appetite. So you will forget to eat because you don't get hungry at all. And it kind of like gets me going. Some people have different reactions to it. Some people's skin, they be picking at their skin. Some people just move a lot. I've been cleaning all day. So I kind of am busy. The next place I'm going to tackle is my room. But, um, I've been eating a lot more healthier and I have not been drinking. I haven't had a drink in a minute. So I know that a lot of my weight loss has to do with me stop. I'm not drinking because prior to taking the pills, I was 217. I had lost two pounds just from not drinking. So, you know, I just really am trying my hardest. You know, I walk every morning. Now I get up at 6 a.m. Instead of going at 8 a.m., I go, I get up at 6 and I just walk with one of the dogs and I listen to my music and then I come home and I bring I, I bring Mumsy to school, I bring my other daughter to school and then I bring Mumsy to school. And basically I have a lot, a lot done during that daytime if I'm up at six. So I really do like waking up at six. Um, I think that's something like older people just do, but either way, I just like to get a lot of things done during the daytime. But um, other than that, I've just been walking and I walk six days a week. Um, I don't walk on a Sunday because you know you do need at least a day or two of rest. So I do walk six days a week and I walk two miles. I was up to three, that was months ago. So I will, you know, get myself back up there in a, in a, in a while. But either way, I walk six days a week versus five days a week. I was only doing five days a week. So I guess the six days will kind of like make up for the three miles. I don't know. I could just be saying that to just be saying that to myself. But other than that, I just really am trying to lose weight because I just, I just want my neck, 
you know, I just want you to see my neck because I want to see my neck. You know what I'm saying? Like, for real. So I do feel like I got a little bit more slender. I can always tell when I gain weight, I get fat in the face and then you can't see my goddamn neck. And then I just be really pissed off. So like I really lost all that weight that I had to gain it back from drinking. Like, oh my God. Anyway, you know what I'm saying? So other than that, that's basically it. Today's hairstyle is a half wig. Okay. So this is the hair from her given hair. I've had this half wig for a minute. Um, I actually made it into a half wig because it was a U part and they sent me a closure and I just made it into a half wig. But um, I just twisted my hair in the front and gathered it into the half wig. So that's basically it. You know me. I like to do stuff really, really simple. Um, yeah, and that's it. And other than that, there's really nothing um, nothing new. Um, I redid my son's room downstairs. You know, he's not here. He's in New York, but I think he's about to come back because he's just really, really miserable. But I redid his room because it was just a mess. Like, when I say it was a mess, like, you know, he's a boy. He has his own bathroom downstairs. I cleaned that today, but his room was, like, a horrible mess. Like, I had never bought him a bed frame, so he had a box spring and a mattress, and it was on the floor. But it was so thick that you, you would think it didn't even need one. But anyway, so I bought a new bed, bed headboard, everything. Just changed the room around. Around. new comforter set made it look so nice for him and um when i showed it to him he was like wow he thought i was at a hotel at first and i was just like okay you don't see kanye west on the wall because he loved kanye and he was just like that's making me want to come back home so i was doing that i did that um recently this was this past weekend um it wasn't like brand new it wasn't a brand new headboard you know offer up got a nice mahogany wood um slate bed okay um and used some things I already had around my house and hooked it up for him. But that's about all I have been doing. Um, yeah. I really don't have much to talk about. Um, I don't have my nails on anymore, which really sucks because they have broken off and they really hurt. My fingers hurt and they're really tender underneath. So I don't know what to do because I don't want to go to New York for the RPG show without any fingernails on. Um, because I just feel like, you know what I'm saying? But I really don't want to have them on right now because my fingers are so tender. So I think what I'm just going to do is I'm just going to put some paste on ones. So that way I could feel like, okay, I got something on. So I think that's the first thing that I'm going to do. So that way I don't have to be committed to going back and forth to get my nails done because my nails are so sore. Like it hurts to the touch if, I, if I'm under the nail bed. So I really do need to leave them alone because they were on for six months. So they really do hurt. Um, and they just been breaking off and splitting. So, you know, but other than that, you guys, let's get into this video. Um, yeah, let's just get into this real talk, you guys. Okay, you guys. Hello, Miss. Oh. oh. First of all, before I even begin the real talk, if you want a real talk about yourself, you can always send me an email to muffinismylovers2012 at gmail.com. Please make sure to put in the subject line, real talk. And if you have people in the email that you don't want their real names given, you can always let me know in the email, hey, April, I've already changed the names. If you don't say that, I'm going to assume that you already have done so, and I'm just going to read it as is. You know what I'm saying? So, yes. So now, let's get on to real talk. Hello, Miss April. You can call me Leah. I was dating this guy. You can call him Newman. We was dating for over a year, and he is a little older than me. I am 20, and he is 25. We broke up back in March because he got busy working two jobs, and I was busy being a full-time student in college. I'm going to become an RN. He hit me up back in July stating he wants to get back together with me and work things out. I said sure because we didn't break up on bad terms and I truly did miss him a lot. Whenever he would schedule whenever he would schedule a day to hang out, he would always send me off a last minute and by last minute I mean I'd be on the road to see him and he would text out of the blue saying he can't hang out because of work or his car is not working, which was weird because I was driving there or watching his niece. I said, okay, that's fine. After a while, I got sick of it. And I said, what's really going on? He never replied to me. He just left my message on red. Couple days later, I go on Facebook and I see he's tagged by some girl saying they're in a relationship. I was pissed. I wanted to cuss him out, but I said, no, I will just ignore him and unfriend him on Facebook. Few weeks later, he posted a cute picture 
a um, few weeks later, oh, I posted a cute photo of me in my scrub outfit, and he commented back with kissy face and hard eyes. I inboxed him stating, do not talk to me since you have a girlfriend. I don't roll that way. He left me on red and did not respond until the end of August, starting my, until the end of August, starting my second year of college. He inboxed me stating he couldn't reply earlier because he was shocked that I made that statement about him and it was absolutely wrong and wanted me to find out the truth about what? Okay. Let's hold on. He inboxed me stating he couldn't reply earlier because he was shocked that I made that statement about him and it was absolutely wrong and want me to find out the, and he wants me to find out the truth about myself, about himself. Oh, okay. So basically the way she worded it is, um, I made the statement about him and it was absolutely wrong and he wanted me to find out the truth on my own about him. I told him that doesn't even make sense. I did it for a second. Why couldn't you just tell me and I saw and I see. Why couldn't you tell me and I see the post on Facebook with my own eyes? He kept saying it's not true. Okay, so basically she was talking about the girl that was tagged. Okay, he kept saying it's not true and he would untag himself in the post she tagged him in. I didn't want to believe him, but I gave him another chance. I know I'm stupid to see if he could be honest or if he really was telling me the truth. So I gave him another chance to see if he was being honest with me. I wanted to see if he was telling the truth. As I go on his Facebook page, I don't see any posts of, of hers on there. I go on her page and guess what? I see pictures and everything of them too. She even posted that she bought him a pair of $200 shoes. I was shocked and pissed. When I went over to his house to confront him, I asked, Oh, nice shoes. Where you get them from? He smiled and said, Oh, my mom bought them for me. He looked me dead in my eyes and lied because those was the same exact shoes I seen on that post on Facebook. I said, wow. And I just left. He kept calling and calling me and I ignored his calls. The next day was his birthday and everyone on Facebook would post happy birthday, Newman. So on and on, so on and so forth. And guess who popped up? His girlfriend. She put GF. She wished him a happy birthday, saying how much she loves him and can't wait to see him. I took a screenshot of that post and I sent it to him. And I said, I'm done. He read the message and never responded. No apology or anything from him. I was upset, but learned that it was my fault because I shouldn't have bit my tongue. Because I didn't want him to think I'm crazy. A few weeks later, I started missing him and looked on her page and seen that they had bought her, that he had bought her a new truck. Oh shit! I was shocked because for some random chick you don't know, you're buying her a truck. I just said forget it and felt hurt. Every time I post a picture on Instagram, he would always like them, and I mean every single post. I'll post within two minutes. Here he is liking him. It catches me off guard, but I feel like I can't let my guard down. What should I do, Miss April? I really need some guidance on what to do. Should I yell at him and tell him to stop liking my pics and sending me friend requests on Facebook or just keep it ignoring them? Please think. Please help. And thanks a lot, Leah. So basically, because I got all confused a little bit. So basically, Leah has been with this guy, um, Newman, and he's 25, she's 20. And they broke up back in March because he's so busy for work and such. And he didn't make time for her. So she, you know, they didn't break up on bad terms. You know, she was going to school, but they broke up because he was so busy working. So when he's not too busy, he decides to hit her up and ask her, you know, I miss you. I want to get back with you. And she's like, sure. First of all, that's where you go wrong at. If somebody break up with me, I don't give a fuck if we didn't break up on bad terms. I'm not about to let you fucking hit me up, call me, Facebook me, Instagram DM me, talk about I miss you. Can we get back together? Like, and be like, sure. Like, girl, you're crazy. That's why it's, it's like that. I'm not saying you easy, but are you crazy? You got to play hard to get sometimes. And then sometimes you got to put your foot back, 
foot down. I know, like, I understand we all do miss people. We all miss being in relationships sometimes. We all don't want to be lonely sometimes. But you know what? Sometimes being lonely is way better than being stressed out in a relationship. Trust me. Trust me when I tell you this. You know what I'm saying? And then on top of that, like, how do you break up with somebody because you're so busy at work? Like, that don't even make any sense. I would have just questioned that right there. Like, okay, so we're not together and we didn't really get to spend much time together. We broke up because you just be so busy at work. Then that means we was never really together. And that's just not questionable. There are married couples who have been together for years and they don't really get to spend so much time together because one may work at night and one may work at the daytime. You know what I'm saying? So they don't really get to spend much time, but they not getting divorced because they... You know what I'm saying? They still together. So I would have questioned that. But here's the thing. Okay, so you got back with him because you missed him so much. Okay, I understand that we all do miss people. But let me tell you something. You can't be so easy and be like, sure, okay? Because that's just basically just saying, oh, okay, I'm walk all over her. You know what I mean? Like, oh, okay, she fine with anything. She was fine with me breaking up with her in March. And here we go. I can get it back whatever I want. Like, that's basically what you fucking said. But on top of that, when you did get back together... Every time y'all was supposed to hang out and do boyfriend and girlfriend stuff, he always blowing you off like, oh, I got to watch my niece. Oh, my car don't work. Oh, I got to go to work. Oh, I got to buy some motherfucking groceries. Oh, I got to I gotta wash my shoes. Oh, I got to do my laundry. Oh, I got to bring my dog to the park. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's like endless fucking excuses. Here's my thing. First of all, you're not going to give me too many motherfucking excuses, okay? You got maybe once, twice, okay? And after that, I'm not trying to hear you with all this extra bullshit because we did break up because you didn't have time for me because you were so busy working. Now, like, it seems like you don't really have time for me right now, so why is we even together, okay? And then you go on his social media and then you seeing, oh, he been tagged and shit. Okay, yeah, people do tag each other on Facebook, so I wouldn't really let that get to me, but I surely would be hunting. I would be trolling fishing whatever the fuck you want to call it i mean because i get tagged in a lot of shit on facebook and it irritates my last motherfucking nerve but okay i'm not going to allow you to pull the wool over my eyes like come on man don't listen sometimes you gotta tell dudes yo for real miss me with that bullshit because it ain't even like that and I'm not the one you ain't about to run the old okie doke on me and that's what he was basically doing running the old okie doke on you so you investigated it you went on her page and you seen loads of pictures of him and loads of pictures of her you know what I'm saying and all of these un he left you on red and didn't respond like listen first of all my patience be too through too thin for a nigga like the type of person I am, I don't have no patience for a nigga. Like, if you want to not reply to my messages, dude, I'm not going to fucking keep fucking hitting you up. And on top of that, if I keep calling you and I, you don't answer, I'm not going to fucking keep calling your ass. Like, okay, you got a couple of times with me and after that, listen, what? The phone works both ways, okay? Communication works both ways. But, okay, so you've seen them all willy-nilly on her page, all booed up. You know what I'm saying? Cuffed up, booed up, whatever the fuck y'all want to call it. That's what you've seen. From that right there, I would have not even bothered to take a screenshot, okay? Because sometimes, you know something? Sometimes... Men sometimes want to see us get out of character or women want to see us get out of character. And me personally, I'm not about to let anybody bring me out of character unless I want to come out of character. Meaning, okay, so you saw the pictures of him and her and you confronted him and he never responded. So the person that really was mad in the end was you because for one, you seen the pictures of them and that was just facts. That was just like more facts. Two, you left him a message, texted him a message, and he never replied to it. That would piss me the fuck off. I know if that was me, I would be pissed the fuck off, okay? But, you know what I'm saying? He didn't respond. Then, come to find out he bought her, he, she bought him some $200 pair of shoes, okay? Let me tell you something. I wouldn't even bother to drive over to that nigga house because... Some things we just got to leave the fuck alone. You know why? Because when you go and you show your ass to a dude, a man, a woman, or whoever, and you let them know that they really done hurt you after they've been already playing you for this long, and you know they've been already be playing you, but you're just going along with it, and you just being stupid, okay, and taking them back and believing them, you know what I'm saying? They expect you to get riled up and get in your feelings. Me personally, if you were the, if you were to do that to me, I wouldn't even bother confronting you. I would, this is, you know, sometimes things left unsaid and left the fuck alone is the worst, okay? Is the worst. Meaning, 
I'm not going to react to your dumb shit. Like, I would do that to my ex-husband. He would do shit to me. And in the beginning of the relationship, I would cry about it. Oh, boo-hoo. Or I would go off on him. Oh, boo-hoo. And then after a while, it's like, you know what? I got numb to the shit. I'm over it, dude. Like, you know what? For real. You're an ass and you're always going to be an ass. There's no reason for me to keep hollering at the top of my lungs trying to correct you or getting my point across. Because my point is going to get across to you maybe once for that day or maybe not even once. What you're going to do is you're going to pretend like what I said to you is affecting you. That's just because you are telling me what you think I want to fucking hear. So after a while, when you keep telling them and you keep going off and you keep confronting them about the ill shit that they've done to you or they're doing to you it gets to be a little bit um okay old you know what i'm saying it gets to be a little bit old so what i would do is i wouldn't even say anything anymore not on purpose but just because i was numb to it and at that point you know what it was like why even bother because i'm not about to waste my time nor my breath fucking going off on you or trying to lecture you on some shit that you're really not going to relate to so for her to be buying him a pair of sneakers just solidified the fact that they fucking okay they fucking there's no reason for you to confront him for what he's either going to lie to you and say oh she likes me and we're not dating each other i don't know why she bought me those which is a lie or he's just going to say yeah she bought them for me Either way, it's going to be some shit that's going to hurt your feelings. You know what I'm saying? So why even put yourself through some shit like that? Me personally, like I said, if I was to see some shit like that, I'm not going to confront you. Maybe because I'm older and I'm setting my ways and I've been through enough. But me personally, I'm just going to be like, okay, cool. I'm not even going to fuck with you no more. I'm not fucking with you no more. Point blank, period. For what? You know what I'm saying? I'm not about to keep wasting my time on some lame ass nigga. And on top of that, okay, if this dude keep liking your pages and liking your pictures, it's always called block. You can block that nigga. Block him. Like, serious, I got dudes that um block, like my shit, you know what I'm saying, they'll like my pictures, they'll follow me, and they'll like my pictures, and they'll say something nice or whatever, and I'll be like, thank you. That's all I'll say is thank you. You say thank you. They in your DM like, yo, what's up, girl? Nigga, I said thank you. I didn't say write me or pay or, or pen pal me. I said thank you. Don't get it fucking screwed up. We not friends, okay? Those type of people is the type of people that I block, okay? And that's all you need to do is block him. You don't have to be in your feelings. You don't have to be worried about, oh, well, he's fucking liking my pictures. You know something? I, Me, petty me, I wouldn't even fucking block him. Keep on liking the shits, nigga. And guess what? I'm not even replying to you. I'm going to see them and not even reply. He wants you to see that. He wants you to know that he's watching you. He wants you to see that he's liking your pictures because he wants a response. Leave him hanging. Fuck it. Girlfriend, let me tell you something. Life is very short, and I say this almost all of my videos. It really is. You know what I'm saying? Let's not take it for granted. We don't want to be alone. There's lots of men out there in the world that are well worth your time and effort, okay? Let's stop putting our time... Let's stop putting our time and effort into these low deadbeats. You know what I'm saying? Like, he's just giving you so much fucking heat, Meaning, just ammunition. He, you see it all, girl. You see every last thing. Like, shoes, pictures. And then the nigga just bought her a truck. Girlfriend, let me tell you something. That right there should be enough for you, okay? That should be the icing on the cake. I mean, it should have been the icing on the cake, like, pictures ago, when you seen them both on Facebook. But now that he's bought her a truck, that there, right there, lets you know that they really into each other. I'm saying, ain't no random nigga gonna buy some random bitch that he's just fucking a truck. I'm saying, where 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 they do that at? That's his girl, okay? She love him and they booed the fuck up, okay? They booed the fuck up. So here's what you need to do, Leah, for new men. Ignore him, stop fucking with him, and move on, all right? If it makes you feel any better, I would block him. Like, dead ass serious. I would block him so he don't have to Facebook friend me, request me, and all of that shit. I would block him. Because sometimes blocking people lets them know, like, oh, okay, she don't really want to fuck with me no more. Sometimes you have to put your foot down and let this person know, like, I'm not fucking with you, and I'm going to block you, and I'm over it, okay? That's basically what you have to do. But never lower yourself for some dude. Like, when a man is, like, really putting you out there, like, playing you blatantly in public on social media, why keep going back and forth to him and confronting him? Dude, 
That's all the proof. You got all the receipts right there. The sneakers, the truck, the pictures. You have receipts way before that, but he's showing you more receipts. Let me tell you something. I just be done with shit after a while. I'm not about to let nobody get my blood pressure up unless, like I said, I wanted to. I'm not, like, for real, because you know why? Like I said, I'm, I, I'd rather be single than be aggravated and stressed out by somebody. Like, seriously. Like, it's great to be in a fucking relationship, and it's lovely, especially when it's um, a beautiful relationship. Yeah, shit goes wrong in relationships sometimes. Like, we, we get into arguments. Nobody's relationship is 100% perfect, okay? It never is. And if you think it's going to be, like, you look at these people, these couples on YouTube, these couple channels, and people be like, I, I watched them, and I'd be like, goals like you you don't even know what the fuck goes on behind closed doors bitch they edited that video so fucking much they might have been arguing on camera you don't even know but nobody's relationship is perfect i don't give a damn whose it is michelle and obama's relationship is not perfect like 100 percent perfect i'm pretty sure they've had quite a few arguments in their time okay as long as they've been married let's just be realistic but there's a way to go about handling things but also if you're seeing your spouse or your boyfriend or girlfriend blatantly putting you out there on social media like yeah bitch i'm fucking her or, yeah nigga i'm fucking him then you know what i'm saying maybe it's time to move on there's no reason to confront them because the receipts are right there the best thing the best thing that hurts people the most is not to respond and not to give them any bit of attention you know what i'm saying like seriously like there have been so many times that i have wanted to go off on facebook for my ex-boyfriend the one that i kicked out because i'll see him trying to say little things to my son wuzzle you know what i'm saying on his page and i be wanting to say yo you fuck ass you fat ass you this you that but you know what i'm like for what april why get out of character because if you write something on the page it's just gonna say oh maybe he's gonna think oh she still want me or, or she still care which i really don't but you know this type of person they get all type of different messages and this is what they feel because you have retaliated or you have confronted them or you have messaged them or you have left something you could tell them they dick is small and this and they broke they still would feel like oh she just want me she just mad that's all she thinking about me you know what i'm saying some shit you just got to walk away and not even give them that fucking attention. Don't even give them that. You know what I'm saying? And with him, definitely don't give him that because he's not even worth it. Nigga got a girl he buying her truck, girl buy. Leah, move on. Get your education and move on. I guarantee you, you'll probably find you a nice college boy versus some fucking dumb older man. And he's not really older, but some man who really don't care about you. Like, seriously, you will find the right one. But as long as you hold on to somebody like him. You definitely won't. So just move on and don't worry about it. Don't blow up on Facebook. Don't blow up on him. Don't confront him. Don't take, just leave it alone. That sometimes is the best message. The best message and the best medicine. Leave him the fuck alone and don't say nothing. That should eat a person up for real. Trust me, I know. I have been there and done that, okay? So let's move on to the next. Okay, guys, so on to the second one. I had to quickly leave real quick so if i'm out of breath please excuse me because i had to run up the steps or not even run up the steps walk up the steps um had to go get mumsy from school so yeah walking up them steps um to my bedroom sometimes will tire me out okay until i get really like in the groove with things and i'm really fit you know really fit you fit then i'll be just prancing up the steps like a bunny rabbit well i mean not a bunny rabbit but it's just prancing okay so anyway, so let's get on to the next real talk. April, I'm writing because I am so tired of being single. I'm 26 years old with a five-year-old daughter. I don't think I'm picky, but I do have standards. Sometimes I feel like I should lower these standards. These standards include being clean, having a job, a car, and just being a decent person. She forgot to say having their own place too. Oh, okay, girl, you better throw that in there. Um, I'm a pretty decent person because I'm plus size, plus size as in size 2X or 3X, but I carry myself well. Every time I think something is going good, it really isn't. I'm not clingy. I'm not a sugar mama. I have my own place. I get told a lot that I'm a very cool person, but I think when it comes down to the dudes I'm talking to, I just, they, um, talking to, they just don't want to be, a, they just don't want to be with a big girl. 
The ones that have acted like they really like me tried to move in within a couple of weeks, and I was not going for that. I have no idea how to date. I tried online, but it's mostly just dudes trying to have sex, and I'm not that desperate. I get told that I'm pretty a lot, but it seems men are scared to show some interest in that. I know losing weight would probably make me feel better, but I have PCOS, and it makes it harder for me to lose weight. What advice would you give me or any other subscribers when it comes to being a plus size woman and dating? I honestly have started to accept myself and that and accept this that it just may be me and my daughter forever. Well, first of all, before I even answer this, I want to look up PCOS and what does that mean? Because, you know, that's what she says she has. PCOS. According to Mayo Clinic, a hormonal disorder causing enlarged ovaries with small cysts on the outer edges. So... PCOS is a hormonal a hormonal disorder causing enlarged ovaries with small cysts on the outer edges. Hmm. Is it like fibroid tumors or something? Okay, so because of that hormonal symptoms because of PCOS so PCS PCOS is a hormo a hormonal disorder causing enlarged ovaries with small cysts on the outer edges and sometimes those symptoms can include acne and facial hair like that might be like you know a reaction from the hormones you know what I'm saying like a side effect or whatever so the reason why I guess she's um what did she say Basically, let's see here. Um, I know losing weight would be probably make me feel better, but I have PCOS, and it makes it harder for me to lose weight. Okay, because of her condition, it makes it a little bit harder for her to lose weight. So I wonder, I wonder if that's like even with um, like with fibroid tumors, is it hard to lose weight? Because I have those like bad, and um, I wonder if that's my reason. But anyway, this is not about me. So anyway, so okay, so she didn't tell me her name at all. Okay. Well, what should we call her? Let's call her Gabby. Okay. So Gabby is 26 years old. She's a plus size girl, plus size woman. She has a five year old daughter and she is tired of being single. Okay. First of all, whoever's been single for long enough will can totally relate girl. Hello. First of all, let me just clear one thing up for you guys. Cause I know this is not me, but I need to clear this up in my video from, I think it was, um, last week, my real talk when I said, um, you know, me and my ex-husband was going to, we were getting married. It was a joke. It was like a dull, like sarcastic joke. And I was hoping that you guys really knew that, but I guess a lot of people didn't because they was like congratulating me, like, congratulations, congratulations. Like, and I, I responded to a lot of them, like saying, you know, uh, we're not getting married. It was just a joke. Um, you know what I mean? I don't, you know, maybe one day again, but it's nowhere on the paperwork that we get married anytime soon. You know what I'm saying? It was just be me, me being a start being sarcastic. I'm very sarcastic sometimes, but no, we're not getting married guys. So thank you for the congrats. But, um, you know, no, we're, we're, we're not, I don't even want to say that we're dating. Okay. We, we speak to each other every day. I love you. And I don't know if that's what you want to call it, but Hey, it, listen, I can relate to Gabby because I get tired of being single as well. All right. Now I don't have one five year, one five year old. I have five children and I can totally understand, especially because it gets lonely sometimes. Now, mind you, my situation and hers is a totally different thing. Okay. Totally different thing. I was in a relationship almost two years ago that I got rid of this guy. Well, it wasn't two years cause it was a year and a half ago, but, but while I was even with him, I didn't want to be with him. Okay. So ever since I've been here, I've been alone, basically. I haven't had, um, you know, I've had a booty call, whatever, with one guy that I like, you know what I'm saying? But I had to cut him off because he just talking about he going to make somebody his girlfriend. I mean, you going to be mine. And like, dude, you too self-confident, too, a little bit too self-confident. And you a little stuck on your own self. I just can't with you. But your sex game is on point for sure. But anyway, so listen, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, so I get it. Like, you know, I, I you know, when... I'm going to just use myself as an example. You know, I, I got tired of being single and lonely. And I guess that's why I took in the last dude, you know what I'm saying? And I had to get rid of his ass. But I felt like I wasn't 
attractive to a lot of people or men because of my teeth. You know, I had a big, I had the gap in my teeth and it was kind of like crooked and I was kind of bigger. And I wasn't even really bigger. I was smaller when I first moved here. But, you know, it just really fucked with me. A lot of things fucked with me. And now it's like, okay, well, you got your teeth fixed. So what's the problem now? Do I, is it, I look old. I feel like sometimes I'll look at myself and um, I know you guys probably would um, would not believe that I'm about to say this, but I look up because I'm like the most, I try to be the most positive person. And I always tell you guys, I don't care what other people think, but sometimes I do because sometimes we look at ourselves differently than others do. You know what I'm saying? So I do look at myself and I'd be like, oh, I look ugly or ill, I'm fat or ill, I got my eyes are getting old looking or, you know what I'm saying? I put myself down a lot. And so I always be like, ain't nobody going to want you. And I, I, and I start feeling just like Gabby, like it's just going to be me and my kids for the rest of my life. Maybe I'm not supposed to be with nobody. You know what I'm saying? And this is how I be feeling. And then sometimes I be feeling like, well, maybe if I lose some weight and, and stuff, then I find somebody. But then that makes me feel like, well, why should I have to be thinner to find a man? Like there's got to be somebody for everybody. You know what I'm saying? It shouldn't always be about your size. Understand what I'm saying? And like I said this to you guys last week, like everybody is a certain size. Nobody's supposed to be one size. Okay. Like we're not all supposed to be wearing like size four and six. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, God forbid, I would never want to wear that motherfucker's house anyway. Um, but we we are who we are. We all unique. We all human beings. We are all not supposed to be wearing the same size. If that was the case, there really wouldn't be too many clothing brands out there. You know what I'm saying? There really wouldn't. But there's somebody for every fucking body. Like God's truth, God honest the truth. There's always somebody for everybody. And sometimes like we always look in the wrong places. And then sometimes I think like, you know, maybe if we just don't look so hard that one day, sooner or later, somebody is going to come along that is really interested in us. And that's going to be like the right one. I mean, that's just how I feel because I, I can totally relate to how she feels. And like, I feel that way. You know what I'm saying? Like, don't get me wrong. I love being with my family and I love hanging out with my kids. But sometimes we like more than that. Like, it doesn't have to be like a sexual thing. Like, just having a companion, somebody to tell you you're beautiful and they love you and how much they adore you. You know what I'm saying? You hold hands with them. That makes you feel good. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, sometimes I go out in public. Um, I do sometimes. And sometimes it bothers me that I'll see like these couples, you know, holding hands or all lovey dovey, or they don't even have to be holding hands. It could just be husband and wife or girlfriend and boyfriend in a store together. And they just together, they could just be grocery shopping. Okay. And they're just together. And I just be looking at that. Like, why, is, why can't that be me? Like, I want that. I want what they have. Not knowing that on the other side of the door, they could be going through some shit, fighting or whatever, but everybody's relationship is different. But still in all, they're out in public together. They're in a relationship. I'm not saying the relationship is perfect, but, and if it is, it is. If it isn't, it isn't. But, you know, I look at these people out in public, these couples, and I'm like, damn, I wish I had somebody to walk down the street with. I wish I had somebody to take me to the movies and make me laugh and hold hands and just smile and be on just you know on boot up with you know what i'm saying so I, I be feeling that way a lot of times i do you know but then i think about it like you know what i ain't about to be fucking irritated for real so it's like do i want a relationship or not and like i know how gabby feels like like she said your standards, honey, are really not high at all. You just was lacking one thing. They need to have their own place. Like, seriously. Because here it is. You have met people, met guys, and within a few weeks, they tried to move up in with you. Yeah. Them be the niggas. And what's so sad about it is, like, I've noticed this, and I'm pretty sure I'm not the only person who has ever noticed this, okay? Especially as a woman. Like, men seem to think that plus-size women are desperate, you know what I'm saying? Like, seriously, they'll feel like, oh, well, I'm going to move up in with I'm going to move in with her. I'm going to try to move in with her. Just because we're plus size or we may have a flaw with us doesn't mean we're motherfucking desperate. Okay? That's what I fucking hate the most. Like, I've seen this a lot. And, like, sometimes I have seen, like, even TV shows, reality shows, not even reality shows, but, like, talk shows. And it'll be a plus size woman and a thin man. And she'll be talking about how he's dogging her out. 
out or you know you got your friends that's plus size and they skinny boyfriend is dogging them out you know what i'm saying and it's like what the fuck it feels like they these thin skinny ass men feel like because we are plus size women like we'll just take whatever whatever you give us like because we're plus size we're desperate it's not like that and like i don't think like your standards of a man is 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 too high. Like seriously, like you can add on some more shit to that. Like uh, I don't want no nigga that been in and out of jail. Okay, he got to have some good credit. Okay, he got to have his own place. Okay, he can't be using drugs. Okay, or or an alcoholic. Like don't shit, girl. Add some more shit because me personally, I would be adding some more shit because you ain't add all of that. But yeah, definitely clean. He need to have a job. He need to have a car. Sometimes just having a car ain't shit because he can have a car and be a crackhead. Okay and want to live with you okay like i'm sorry but he can have a job and be clean and have a car and be a motherfucking alcoholic pooky crackhead okay knocking on your motherfucking door talking about i'm sorry but i'm tired of sleeping up in my car gabby come on can we cuddle listen bitch put some more standards up on it there's nothing wrong with having standards because sometimes when we have standards, that's a good thing. Because if we don't, then any old Tom, Dick, and Harry, a pookie, okay, come knocking at our fences or trying to hop over the motherfucker, trying to get up in our yard, okay? So, like, seriously, like, I mean, I know I understand that you are tired of looking for love. And you know what? It seems like whenever you look for it, it'd be, like, the worst ones. It'd always be the wrong ones. And I, trust me, take it from me take it from me i have done the online dating okay remember and those be the weirdos like they just it you know what i think it is all about sex you're right because like half of them just the things that come out of their mouth be just like do you talk to your mother like that like i'm a lady i'm a motherfucking woman don't you dare disrespect me so i truly honestly believe that these men are on these apps trying to get some booty action and they feel like because some women are on dating apps or online dating feel like they're desperate and they'll just take whatever and it's not even like that you know what i'm saying but online dating i feel like some of them are a bunch of weirdos i mean some people get lucky and they can find like mr right and then there are some that just find like a dog or a dog with fleas, you know what I'm saying? Or somebody that you just wish you never fucking met. Like, block that shit, okay? I mean, but, like, listen. There's no right way to date. Like, what you said was, I don't I don't even know how to date. Like, there's, there's, I mean, like, there are, there are ways to date. Like, okay, so if you go on a first date, girl, don't go home with them. Don't fuck them, okay? Don't do that, okay? You can kiss them, but don't tongue them down. You know, a little pet. Thank you. It was nice meeting you. I hope we get to meet each other. So don't go out with the person and get all sloppy drunk. You know what I'm saying? Don't do not do shit like that. Be nice or don't be too motherfucking nice. You know what I'm saying? Watch your guard. Don't let that nigga put nothing up in your drink or not, no shit. So there are rules to dating, but the main rule is not to, like, lower your standards. Like, there are many women out there, sweetheart, and I'm going to tell you, my mother is one of them. I love her to pieces, but she has been probably single for like 20, I might be exaggerating a little bit, but I want to say like 20 years, because I think that's what she told me, 20 years, okay? And I, me personally, she doesn't even care, because she's older, she's 63 years old now, and she don't want to be bothered with a man, because she's older, and she all she say is, they ain't nothing but stress, and you know something? She ain't never lied, okay? My mother ain't never lied, they stress, but sometimes some of them that are stressful or worth it, especially if it's a good man, because sometimes every relationship is stressful. But I, when she tells me that, I just be like saying to myself, sometimes I remind myself so much of my mother because of the way that I am. You know what I'm saying? Like, sometimes I tell you guys, like, we don't get along at, some, at times, and we don't sometimes, but you know what I'm saying? That's still my mom. But I, some, I, I feel like I remind myself so much of her because she's what they call a hermit. And that's kind of like what I am because I don't socialize a lot with people, meaning I don't like, I don't really hang out a lot. I don't have friends like that. I don't have a lot of friends. And I guess the new terminology is not hermit anymore. You know what I'm saying? But that's what it really was called back in the day. It was a hermit. Like, you know, you really didn't break out of your show. I mean, I think I was a little bit more outgoing though than my mom, to be honest. You know what I'm saying? But 
as far as like other things like you know I don't hang out a lot and I don't have many friends so the only time that I do get to go out is when I go out to the store and I mean like how am I supposed to find a man then and I'm not even looking anymore I mean because I think I feel like what we're for nobody's gonna want me and I'm just so self-conscious of my fat belly and just things in general you know what I mean but I understand like Gabby we have all been there at a time in our lives when we are tired of being alone and we want to find Mr. Right and we just want someone to love us we have all been there you know what I'm saying I, I'm pretty sure we have all been there you know and I'm not gonna sit here and lie to you and tell you like yeah it's easy girl the right one is gonna come along one day like you know what I'm saying I I would like to think that because I think that of myself as well. And I think that way for myself because me personally, let me tell you something. Sometimes I, I wonder what would it be like just driving down the street with a nice man, a boyfriend that loved me in the, on the other side of me or he me on the other side, whatever, or walk in the store. You know, sometimes I, I it's not even I fantasize about that, but I think about that and I just be like, I, I want to be happy. Or you watch these little shows and things and you're just like, even though you don't know what's going on, on the other side, you, you still see that it's a relationship and that's something that you are wanting. But like I said, sometimes we want too much or we are wanting and we're looking too hard. It always happens with the wrong person. And I, I really feel like that's genuine. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not going to sit here and say, oh, like, you know, I'm not lonely. Like, I would love to be with someone and I would love to be happy. But then there's that part of me that is like, I don't want to be with anybody if it's not my ex-husband. I, I love him and I don't want to be in a relationship with anybody else. So I like being alone sometimes, you know what I'm saying? And I know as me as a person and the type of person that I am, that no one else can make me happy. At least that I know. I mean, I've tried already a couple times and it just wasn't for me. But then again, it's like, April, are you stuck on stupid? Because... You have to get yourself together in order to find the right person. You understand what I'm saying? Because sometimes when we're not so right on the inside, and maybe even sometimes on the outside, but I think mainly when we're not so right on the inside, we kind of attract like the wrong negative people versus if we were just all good all good together on the inside we would probably just like attract like the right type of person so i think like even though people say the right one is going to come along trust and believe the right one is going to come along i i believe that for the most part with a lot of people and with a lot of things and a lot of relationships but i feel like that's not going to happen until you as a person is completely happy with yourself and we can give all these standards and rules to a man of what we want but still and all, if we're not like all right with ourselves, then how are we really going to find somebody that is like truly genuine and want us for us? Like really, Gabby, like it don't matter your size. You know what I'm saying? Like I told you guys this last week, there are men out there who love plus size women. I get tired of the word plus size, okay? Because we ain't plus a motherfucking size, like dead serious. Like that should be pissing me off. Like, stop calling us plus size women. We are curvy, okay? We are just a size. Fuck it. But why do we have to be plus size? Like, we plus a motherfucking size? Like, really, though? Numbers just keep going. Like, fuck out of here with a plus a size. You know what I mean? But either way, we plus size or whatever, curvy, whatever you want to call us, hippie, whatever. You know what I'm saying? I feel like there's always somebody for somebody. And this is facts. Like, this is factual. This is truth. Like, not every man like no skinny ass woman. Not every man like no big fake booty woman. Nor every man likes no big fake titty woman. Not every man like a thick woman. Not everyone likes a plus size woman. Everybody have their own taste. That's like with me. Okay, my taste is this. I only like dark skin guys, and I don't like them too built. You know what I'm saying? With like six packs. I mean that that's handsome. But I'm I, I like the arms. Like if your arms look good, then I'm all in. You know what I'm saying? Um, and you ain't got to be too tall, but you know what I'm saying? That's just my preference. But everybody has their own taste. And trust me, Gabby, your size has nothing to do with 
the man that you attract. It really has to do with your attitude. So meaning, you know what I'm saying? Get right with yourself. If you want to lose weight, then do it. Do it for you. Don't lose weight because you want to attract the opposite sex. Do it for Gabby. When you do shit for the opposite sex or for somebody else, it never pans out. It never works out. You know what I'm saying? You have to do shit for you. That's like, oh, okay, I'm going to put weave in my hair because my hair is short, but he want me to put weave in my hair. Then that weave will come out looking jacked the fuck up because you're trying to do something or it's going to fuck up your hair even more. You're trying to do something for somebody else. You have to do what makes you happy and what's good for you. And I honestly feel like if you want to lose weight, then you do that for Gabby, okay? But then I also honestly feel like there's always somebody for somebody out there, okay? There's somebody who loves gap teeth or crooked teeth or flabby stomachs like mine or whatever. You know what I'm saying? There's always somebody for somebody. And that's like the main problem with us women sometimes. And I'll be the first to do it to myself all the time. We always put in ourselves down. We be quick to put another woman down. We won't put her down in her face sometimes. But we always put other women down. You know, we she walked by, oh, look at her outfit. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't, I don't really do that no more because I'm too old for that shit. And it's like, you know what? She like it. What the fuck? I care if she wearing this shit. She might not like what the fuck I got on. What does it matter? Her changing her outfit is not going to pay my goddamn bills. So it don't even matter. But I feel like we as women, we always like putting ourselves down. And, you know, but we also have to do what makes us feel better. And like with me, I feel like losing weight will make me feel better because, um, my knee and because I want my neck to come back. Okay. So there's nothing wrong with that, but also because it's for my health because of my knee. But then there's the other side of me is like, okay, I feel like my eyes are a little meaty because they are, I don't know if you guys see it, but you probably really can't tell with the eyeshadow, but they are. And sometimes it gets really hard for me to do my makeup or my eyeliner. And I have to fight with them because they're very hooded. I have hooded eyes. So because they're they're older hooded eyes now, it makes it they're getting a little bit more meatier. So I feel like it makes me look older, especially without my makeup. Um, if I don't have any eyeliner on, they look really puffy. So I feel like I need to do something about that. And I'm not doing it for nobody but me, okay? I don't give a fuck about a man, all right? Because I ain't got one, okay? And I ain't really trying to impress one. But I'm doing it because I know it's going to make me feel better, all right? Seriously. And shout out to my girl on Instagram who sent me that Instagram post about the doctor who does the eye filler so I wouldn't have to go get eye surgery. I did not know that they did fillers for eyes and they made your eyes look like that girl, Okay? And they last like one or two years. So now I have been researching fillers to get my eyes done. So that way I don't have to get them cut open because a girl has been saving up her coins to get her eyes done. All right. But, but so thank you diva for sending me that message because I am so appreciative for that. And I know you watch me because I've been mentioning it on YouTube, but Gabby, honestly, just do what's good for you. Make yourself happy first, okay? Because it seems like what you're saying to me and you're 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 like kind of in a rut. You're kind of like in a place where you're not too happy. And you're not too happy about a relationship. You're not too happy about not having a relationship. And you're not too happy about your size. You know what I'm saying? And you're so you're in a place that is in a rut, you know? You're you're not depressed. I don't know if you are, but you're in a place where you're not too happy. We have all been there and I'm there too, okay? But the first thing that we have to do before we move on to a relationship is finding ourselves. And then Mr. Right is going to come along. Who cares if it takes a year? You're still young. This is a time for you to focus on your daughter, you know what I'm saying? And you, you know what I'm saying? A lot of positive things, when you put out positivity, you get a positivity answer back with anything positivity things just flow your way when you want to be drama and messy you get nothing but drama and, and bullshit in your life and negative shit seriously for real people feel like sometimes oh why are you so nice like when they meet me oh you're from new york you're so nice people from new york well i don't know why why would i want to be rude and mean to people on purpose like for no reason it's just harder to be mean like for real I, there's no reason like I get that a lot. Like, oh, you're so nice and you're from New York. I don't believe, I can believe it because your accent, but 
people from New York are so rude. We're not all rude, okay? And I don't really have a reason to go around being rude and mean to people. Like, I wouldn't want anybody to treat me like that. So, you know what I'm saying? I've heard this all my life, though. You you don't act like the rest of the New Yorkers. You're so nice and you're polite. Because my mother raised me like that. And I don't feel the need to go around and being rude to people. Like, that's really no point. But... You know what I'm saying? I never really have too much drama in my life, unless it's like in a relationship. I really don't try. But I feel like this, like, drama feeds off of negative shit. And positives feeds off of positive shit. So right now, Gabby, you have, like, this negative attitude. And it's okay. It's nothing wrong with that, okay? We all get there. We all get there. But the first thing that we have to do is we have to realize that. And we have to pull ourselves out of that. And we have to think positive. And we have to do things to make ourselves happy. This is the reason why I'm single, okay? Because I would like a relationship. But I know with me... I want to focus on me. I want to focus on my children. I want to focus on getting my money up. I want to focus on bettering myself. I want to focus myself on my channel and on my health and things like that. And right now, a man is not in, in, in any of that. I don't see them because they're going to kind of like halt me, stop me from doing what I need to do. I don't, I want to give everything to me because I haven't been able to do that in so long. You know what I'm saying? So it's my time now, regardless of what it is, it's my time. And then I'll, I will know when the time is right. And then I will know when the time is right is because the right person will present himself to me. In the meantime, in the tea time, you ragamuffins and derelict dudes and whatever that try to come for me, I'll be having up the cross, like back away, back away, back away. You know what I'm saying? So don't put yourself down about your way, sweetheart. Don't feel like that. And don't be desperate either. And don't be just fucking with anybody. And stay off of those websites about dating people, dating online websites. Because those are not going to make you feel any better. I know I know this for a fact because when I first got on a dating website, I would be checking my thing like every few minutes. Like, ain't nobody think I'm cute? Don't nobody want to date me? Ain't nobody message me? This is things that I would think. Okay, so those things don't make your self-esteem feel no better. Like, dead serious, okay? Because they just don't. Trust me. So, get off of those. Get get yourself out more. And if you have friends, hang out with the girls. Having friends and hanging out with the girls, sometimes you guys go to the right places. You attract the right kind of attention, okay? But either way, your size has nothing to do with it. It's your attitude, okay? It's your attitude and the negativity that's inside of you. I know some people probably be like, girl, what? Please. Hmm. It's true. You know what I'm saying? Like, you may not feel that way, but I know that when I was, like, not not too, I didn't have too many um, goals, not goals, but I really didn't have too many, you know, I mean, you had to have teeth, you had to have a job, or you had to have some type of money. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I did have some things that the dude had to have, but my standards weren't that high. Okay, but now that I have like really high standards, all the low lives don't even fuck with me. Like seriously, so that that leads me to say like, okay, April, you're doing something right because then when you get the low life dudes, those be the ones that stress you out. They want to borrow some money. They want to come over and then they don't want to fucking go. Okay, they need a motherfucking ride. All type of shit. Trust me, you better off single sometimes, girl. But it won't be forever. You know what I'm saying? Mr. Right is going to come along. I'm not going to say it's today. I'm not going to say it's tomorrow. But it will happen eventually. And maybe for me too. You know what I'm saying? When I say maybe, meaning maybe 20 years from now, I could be in my mom's age and 63. And that's when I find Mr. Right. You never know. Never too old for love, okay? But we always too old for bullshit. Straight up. So on that note, I hope you guys enjoyed this real talk. And... And all of that goody, good, good stuff. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this real talk. And as always, I love you guys. Stay diva and divalicious. You know what I'm saying? If you haven't subscribed to my channel, make sure you do thumbs this video up because you love me. Show me some love. You know what I'm saying? Hit that notification so that way when I upload videos, you definitely will be notified. And then you can watch them. I mean, because come on. Why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you want to? Like, it's me. Muffins. Everybody needs a muffin, right? Hello. Duh. But I love you guys, and of course, stay diva and divalicious, and I will see you in my suit. Uh, 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 uh,